Welcome to AI Talking Head. Chinese space officials have unveiled new details about the ambitious International Lunar Research Station ILRS, project, which recently welcomed a dozen new partners. According to Wu Yanhua, the chief designer of China's major deep space exploration program, the China-led moon base will be capable of conducting scientific research operations within a 100 kilometers, 62 mile radius of the lunar south pole by 2035. By 2050, the ILRS will expand into a network of research facilities at the moon's south pole, equator, and far side. A Tiangong-like space station in lunar orbit will serve as the Earth-Moon transport hub, Wu announced during the Deep Space Exploration Conference, Tiandu Forum, in Wangshen, Anhui Province. Before we begin with this intriguing story, we appreciate that you can subscribe to our channel so that we can bring you more content similar to this one. Thank you so much for your support. Let's continue. First proposed by China and Russia in 2017, the ILRS initiative aims to establish an expandable platform for scientific research and resource utilization on the moon, featuring long-term autonomous operations with short-term human participation. Often seen as a rival to the US-led Artemis program, the ILRS project has garnered widespread attention and positive responses, according to the China National Space Administration CNSA. Numerous state and sub-state entities have already signed cooperation agreements to work with China on the ILRS. Senegal became the latest country to join the project on Thursday, September 5, following commitments from Russia, Venezuela, Belarus, Pakistan, Azerbaijan, South Africa, Egypt, Nicaragua, Thailand, Serbia, and Kazakhstan. During the two-day conference in Wangshen, other organizations that signed memorandums of understanding included the South African Radio Astronomy Observatory, the Space Science Innovation Center of Panama, the Belgrade Observatory in Serbia, the National University of Sciences and Technology of Pakistan, and the University of Bandar Lampung in Indonesia. Additionally, companies such as the United Arab Emirates Orbital Space and Switzerland Space Dock signed agreements related to ILRS cooperation, according to CNSA. The ILRS represents China's first large-scale international project in the space sector, which it will lead, as stated by Wu Weiren, the chief designer of China's lunar program, in a separate interview with state broadcaster CCTV. China aims to attract 50 countries, 500 research institutions, and 5,000 scientists from around the world to participate in the ILRS over the next 10 years, Wu said. China is set to launch several precursor missions to the lunar south pole as part of the ILRS, including Chang'e 7 in 2026 and Chang'e 8 in 2028. Chang'e 7 will carry a hopper designed to search for water ice in the shadowed craters, while Chang'e 8 will test in situ resource utilization technologies, including 3D printing bricks using lunar soil. As a major partner of the ILRS, Russia plans to launch its Luna 26 spacecraft around 2027, First Deputy Prime Minister Denis Manchurov told TASS. Luna 26, designated as a precursor mission in the ILRS joint proposal, will deploy an orbiter to map the distribution of minerals on the lunar surface and find frozen water in the lunar soil. Russia is also collaborating with Chinese counterparts to develop an automated nuclear reactor on the moon by 2035, according to Roscosmos, the country's space agency. The ILRS project has not released detailed, finalized architectural and design specifications that are widely recognized or agreed upon due to its developmental nature. However, conceptions of the ILRS have emerged from various sources, including academic papers, discussions by space agencies, and statements from Chinese space authorities. These concepts provide a preliminary understanding of the architectural and design principles that might underpin the ILRS. Key Design Principles and Architectural Concepts 1. Modular Design Similar to other space stations and exploration projects, the ILRS is expected to adopt a modular design approach. This means that the Lunar Research Station would be constructed from a series of interconnected modules, each serving specific functions. Modularity allows for scalability, flexibility, and the ability to repair or upgrade components without rebuilding the entire station. 2. Robust Power System A critical component of the ILRS architecture is a reliable power system. 
Concepts include the use of solar panels, given the lunar day, about 29.5 Earth days, which requires innovative energy storage solutions to provide continuous power. Nuclear thermal or nuclear electric propulsion systems have also been discussed as potential power sources for more ambitious operations. 3. Life Support Systems The design must incorporate advanced life support systems that can recycle water, air, and waste, making them self-sufficient. This is crucial for long-term habitation and research. 4. Lunar Regolith Utilization There is a strong emphasis on utilizing the lunar environment, including the regolith, loose material that covers solid bedrock. This could involve extracting oxygen from the regolith, using it as a radiation shield, or as a construction material for the base itself through a process known as in situ resource utilization ISRU. 5. Research Facilities The ILRS will feature a variety of research facilities designed to conduct experiments in fields such as astronomy, geology, biology, physics, and materials science. These facilities will need to be durable, capable of withstanding the harsh lunar environment, and designed to be remotely operated or autonomous. 6. Communication and Navigation Systems Efficient and robust communication and navigation systems will be integral, ensuring connectivity between the lunar station, Earth, and any spacecraft in lunar orbit or on the surface. This includes high-definition video transmission for remote operations and navigation aids for surface mobility. 7. Sustainability and Resilience the design will prioritize sustainability, aiming to minimize the environmental impact and maximize the resilience of the station against lunar hazards such as micrometeoroids, solar radiation, and temperature extremes. Phased Approach The ILRS is envisioned to be developed in phases, starting with robotic missions to establish the initial infrastructure, followed by crewed missions to expand and operate the station. The first phase might involve deploying robotic landers, rovers, and possibly even simple habitats and research facilities to test and demonstrate key technologies. Subsequent phases would focus on expanding the base, integrating human habitation, and conducting long-term research. Chinese scientists are planning to send bricks made from simulated lunar soil into space to test their durability in extreme conditions and assess their potential for building a research base on the moon. These sample bricks will be transported to the Tiangong Space Station next month aboard the Tianzhou-8 cargo spacecraft, according to Ding Lian, an expert in intelligent construction from Wazhong University of Science and Technology in Wuhan. Ding and his team will conduct a three-year experiment to observe how the samples degrade under radiation and temperature fluctuations. We can bake the bricks to a strength of 100 megapascals here on Earth, which is much harder than concrete, Ding who leads the university's National Center of Technology Innovation for Digital Construction, explained during a live broadcast on state broadcaster CCTV. However, further research is needed to determine if the bricks can withstand the harsh lunar environment. For comparison, standard clay bricks typically have a strength between 10 and 20 MPa, while high-strength bricks used in specific structural applications can reach up to 50 MPa. Ding mentioned that the artificial lunar soil used in the bricks has components nearly identical to the real thing, though each sample contains slightly different ingredients. To simulate the lunar surface environment, the soil was placed in a graphite mold and baked in a vacuum hot press furnace. China aims to build a research base, known as the ILRS, near the moon's south pole by 2035 for scientific exploration and resource development. As of April, more than 10 countries and organizations had joined the ILRS, according to the China National Space Administration. Ding's team has proposed designs for the research base, including an egg-shaped lunar pot vessel, that could be 3D printed on the moon or assembled using lunar soil bricks with the help of a robot operating on the lunar surface. Another option is for the robot to bake the bricks and then assemble them using joinery structures similar to those in traditional Chinese architecture. Ding noted that building the research base on the lunar surface will present multiple challenges, including the lack of water, low gravity, and frequent moonquakes, as he mentioned in an interview with China Science Daily last year. Ding also stated that they expect the first brick made from actual lunar soil to be manufactured during China's Chang'e 8 mission in 2028. Other research teams in China are also working on moon base concepts, including a group from the Harbin Institute of Technology, which has proposed Clover and Red Star designs for flat surfaces and lunar craters, respectively.
The ILRS project, in the context of China's space ambitions, has several significant implications that span political, technological, and strategic domains. Here are some of the key implications. 1. Strengthening China's space leadership. The ILRS project is a strategic move by China to consolidate its position as a leading spacefaring nation. By spearheading an international project on the lunar surface, China is not only showcasing its technological prowess and lunar exploration capabilities but also establishing itself as a key player in the global space community. This leadership role can enhance China's geopolitical influence and prestige on the world stage. 2. Technological and Scientific Advancements China's space ambitions, epitomized by the ILRS project, drive technological and scientific advancements. The project necessitates the development and refinement of technologies for lunar surface operations, such as landing systems, life support, communication, and lunar rovers. These advancements not only contribute to the project's goals but also have applications in other areas, potentially leading to breakthroughs in material science, robotics, and more. 3. International Cooperation and Competition the decision to make ILRS an international project signals China's willingness to cooperate with other countries in space exploration. This approach contrasts with the competitive narrative often seen in space exploration, where countries vie for leadership and dominance. By inviting other nations to participate, China is building a collaborative framework that could mitigate some of the competitive pressures in space, at least among the participants. However, it also reflects a strategic move to align other nations with China's space objectives, potentially sidelining those that do not join or align closely with the project. 4. Legal and Regulatory Challenges The ILRS project raises questions about international law and the governance of space, particularly regarding the Moon and other celestial bodies. The 1967 Outer Space Treaty and the 1979 Moon Agreement, among other international instruments, govern the exploration and use of outer space. China's leadership in the ILRS project could influence the development of new international agreements or the interpretation of existing ones, especially concerning resource extraction and the establishment of permanent bases on the moon. 5. Economic and Commercial Opportunities China's space ambitions, including the ILRS project, open up economic and commercial opportunities. The project could stimulate the growth of a lunar economy, including the mining of lunar resources like helium-3 for potential use in nuclear fusion, or the extraction of other rare materials. This economic frontier could attract investments and lead to the creation of new industries and jobs, both in China and among ILRS partners. 6. Strategic Rivalry with Other Spacefaring Nations While the ILRS project promotes international cooperation, it also takes place against the backdrop of strategic rivalry with other spacefaring nations, particularly the United States. The project could intensify competition in space exploration technologies and lunar resource utilization. It also raises questions about the balance of power in space, with the US and its allies potentially seeking to counterbalance China's growing influence through their own space exploration initiatives and alliances. The ILRS project is a multifaceted endeavor that reflects and amplifies China's space ambitions. It has the potential to reshape the global space landscape, influencing international relations, technological development, and the future of space exploration. The project's success will depend on how China navigates the challenges of international cooperation, legal governance, and the strategic interests of other spacefaring nations. We hope you enjoy this episode. If you like our content, please subscribe to our channel, like and share our video. We will bring you more content similar to this one. Thank you for watching and we look forward to seeing you in our next video.